It's time for Bogish at the Plate. Here's Andrew Bogish. And welcome to a brand new edition of Bogish at the Plate. Hope you had a great 4th of July. Here we go towards the second half of the season right now. Our Play.it colleague Jake Brown will join us momentarily to get you caught up on the Mets and Yankees. But right now, we recap that whole first half. Look ahead to the rest of July, August, and then September with Matt Snyder, MLB writer from CBSSports.com. Matt's in San Diego during the All-Star break. Matt, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Sure thing. Uh, having a good time out here. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was I just. Guess I'll take a break from having a good time to talk to you. Does that, does that sound too mean? <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I I will keep you on the phone as as short as possible. To get you back out to maybe my second most favorite city in this country. If I didn't have to live in New York, I think I'd live in San Diego. Oh, it, it's gorgeous. I uh, I was angry yesterday when I woke up because I saw a cloud of the sky. <laughs> so it, yeah. Uh, now, Matt, one of my least favorite things about baseball is that the All Star Game actually means something. Uh, is there any chance of getting relief from that, whether it's Rob Manfred, anybody else? Is there any push to make this game just just be a game again? Not in the near future, no. It sounds like they are all pretty much on board with uh, keeping this how it is. There doesn't seem to be much push from the player side or the owner side to change anything. And uh, the commissioner is, I mean, he's really cut from the same cloth as Bud Selig. And he, he was around with Bud Selig for a while, and I think he kind of likes the idea of it of, of it mattering. Um, I, I think diehard fans get angry about it, but we're probably in the minority when it comes to all baseball fans, and I think a lot of people just don't even notice it until you get to the postseason and somebody might ask, oh, wait, hey, why does the, the AL or the NL have home field advantage? Oh, the All-Star game. Oh, I didn't know that. I So it's... I, I just don't think it's that high on their list of priorities to change. Even from the player perspective, you don't think the play, you know the players actually do care about the side in this? I, I would actually witness uh, at media day on Monday several people asking the players about it and their reaction every time. It was weird how little they it moved the needle for them. Like uh, it was always like, ah, you know. We'd like to win, but I'd like to win every game. And, right. Uh, well, what if your team gets to the World Series? Well, you know, you still have to win four. And, and nobody really even would take a stand and say anything even remotely kind of what I feel like I would want them to say. Like, no, this is stupid. It should, <laughs> nobody, nobody even came close to that. Nobody. So they're all drinking the Kool-Aid happily, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if they're just towing the, the company line. Which they probably are. Yeah. But yet nobody would come even close to saying anything remotely bad about it. So right now at CBSSports.com, Matt wrote a uh, a column kind of predicting how the voting would go for the for the NL and AL awards if you were doing the voting right now, not his own picks, but how he thinks the the, the writers' association uh, their voting would pan out. And the thing that jumped out to me is Clayton Kershaw is your assumed NL MVP, Matt. And obviously, you know, his back issue throws a wrench into that for right now. But um, in general, are you okay with a pitcher being an MVP? I am if he has completely and utterly dominated the league and there's no position player that sticks out head and shoulders above everybody else. Like the Justin Verlander pick a few years ago, that made sense. Because the, the best position player options were like Jose Bautista, Jacoby Elferi, who both had great years. But they didn't just feel – it just feels so subjective to do this stupid it, does he feel like an MVP argument. But I guess it, that's kind of where I am on the pitchers thing. Is, is If you're not having one position player who's just totally – like Bryce Harper last year in the National League. Right. If you don't have somebody like that who's just knocking you over and there is a, a starting pitcher who is bowling over the competition, then I, I, I'm usually okay with it. Um, get Give Kershaw a few more weeks if he's still out, and I'm going to start being on the Chris Bryant bandwagon or, or maybe Daniel Murphy or, or somebody else. But for now, I think it's Kershaw. Uh, AL Manager of the Year, the prediction, again, at the comments, CBSSports.com, is, is Terry Francona. Did you think the Indians would be this good at the break? Not this good. I, I thought that they were going to have a good ball club. I can. I think it, it's hard to go back in hindsight, but if I had to guess, I think I would have said that they were going to be somewhere in the mid-80s and wins, and, and now I kind of feel like they're going to be mid-90s and wins. And, you know, they're not necessarily their best, because I think Francisco Lindor is probably, you can say he's their best player now, but 
one of their best position players, Michael Brantley, has been out almost all season. Yeah. And they lost Carlos Carrasco for probably six starts from the rotation. Uh, and to be up this much and have that much of a commanding lead, that's a, an incredible testament to overall how well they're playing, but also to Frank Kona. Matt, who's the best team in the American League right now in your mind? It's the Indians. I, I think, I mean, they're starting pitching, bullpen, defense, offense. You, you run the gamut on them. They're good at everything. And they might not be exceptional offensively, but they're good. And they are exceptional in the rotation. And I, I, I really believe they have staying power. Specifically in the AL West, do the, do the Rangers have staying power? Or do you think Houston can catch them? Uh, I, I would say yes to both. <laughs> I think <laughs> the Rangers do have staying power, but I think the Astros have a chance to run them down. And it, it, what, what's funny is the Astros were down double digits uh, uh, for a while mm -hmm. after such a terrible April. That could end up being the best two-team race. I think it's going to go down to the wire. I think it's going to be great. The one key is the Astros have to start beating the Rangers. There's, there's something like 1-8 and eight against yeah. the Rangers, and that's what the, basically the entire difference in the division. They've got to start beating them head-to-head. -head. But if they can do that, it, this is going to be a close one. Let me jump over to the National League right now as we speak to Matt Snyder from CBSSports.com in San Diego here during the All-Star break. Uh, any concern on your part for the Cubs' swoon, which is almost, I guess, now a month, right, You know, going into the break, just kind of scuffling? Is this just kind of the normal ebb and flow of a season, or have they shown some weaknesses here? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Like They desperately need to do something about the bullpen. Uh, but I think the rotation just got tired and they needed a break. And offensively, I mean, they were hitting the ball in those last few games against the Pirates. The Pirates were just hitting it right back. So I think that it was probably some kind of payback for that 25-6 and six start because that's ridiculous yeah. that's out of this world. And that's going to even out at some point. And it was a combination of that, some kind of payback, and them needing to kind of do something about the bullpen. So overall, I think they're fine. And if you would have said to Cubs fans back in the spring, going to the All-Star break, you're going to have a seven-game lead, they would have been ecstatic. That's exceptional. Seven games, that's huge. But the sequencing of it has been kind of rough on them <laughs> because you build up a 12-and-a-half game lead and it dwindles all the way down to like uh, six-and-a-half or even six, five-and-a-half maybe, I think, before the last couple games. But it really kind of got down there. So it's it, it's been really weird how how it's all gone down. But I overall I think they're fine. Yeah, it's it's weird how they get to where you think they're gonna be. It just never goes yeah. in the in the line you think they're gonna get there by. Yeah, like somebody the other day asked me, uh, are they not as good as we thought they were gonna be? And I was like, well, it, that depends on from what perspective. Because it, it, as good as we thought they were gonna be before the season, if you would have said going into the year they're going to be up seven games at the all-star break. I would have said, yeah, that sounds, that sounds about right. So it's, it's just a, a sequencing type thing that it's, it's really, really weird. Matt, who's the biggest name you think gets moved before the August 1st deadline? Jonathan Lucroy. I think the Brewers are definitely going to move him. And, you know, he's a multi-time all-star catcher. There are very few catchers who can hit the ball like Jonathan Lucroy. I mean, Buster Posey comes to mind. But other than that, there are very, very few guys offensively who can hit the ball like he does, and he works very well with his pitching staff. He's a good defender. He's a free agent after the year, so you pop up a ton to get him. But there's going to be some bidding on him. I mean, I, I can think about teams like the Rangers, the Indians, um, the Pirates, the Mets, who all could use an upgrade at catcher, and even somebody who they can slide to first base every once in a while. I think it's going to be really fun to watch how the bidding goes down on him. Read him at CBSSports.com. Follow him on Twitter at Matt Snyder CBS. Matt, thanks so much for the time today. Enjoy the rest of the time in San Diego. Hopefully we can get you again before the season's over. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. There's Matt Snyder again, CBSSports.com. When we come back, Jake Brown talks Mets and Yankees here on Bogus at the Plate.